Good morning, everybody. So this is a welcome to our webinar here. So we are dealing with our classes in a fun way. So those who work in high school, so they know how difficult it is to deal with large classes. So this is an interesting presentation and we have to hear Professor Gabriela Rodriguez from Peru. Uh, and she's going to work today with us, <clears throat> teaching us on this presentation, all right? So this is the presentation. We have here the registration link. So if there are more people who like to join us, so this is the, the, the registration link. Also, you have the YouTube link here. And uh, <clears throat> it is important that you can see or if you know uh, anyone who would like to join us today. So it's interesting you can share this link on your web page, on your uh, Facebook pages or Instagram. All right, so we have here today, uh, it's important to mention the countries, the Central American and, all, and the Caribbean based in TESOL affiliates. So Belize, Colombia, Costa Rica, Cuba, El Salvador, Guatemala, Haiti, Venezuela, Honduras, Mexico, Nicaragua, Panama, Peru, Puerto Rico, and the Dominican Republic. Uh, our upcoming events, so there are some upcoming events, the next webinar. So we have here of the CA and CD diesel affiliate group. Doing action research isn't that hard. Let's do it. So we have here Professor Carlos, Ma uh, Carlos Mallorca from Universidad Latina of Costa Rica. So we have here the date, November 18th, 2018, right? So it's not 2019. If there is some mistake there, so it's on Sunday. It's on, on November 18th. Uh, we have here the time, so it's 9 a.m. Costa Rica time, 3 p.m. GMT, and Venezuela time, 11 a.m. It is also important to mention that we have other Ventisol regional conferences. They start from November to December uh, 2018. So we have different venues here. There are different cities within Valencia, uh, within Venezuela, across Venezuela. So we have Valencia, Merida, Guaturin, Maracaibo, Trujillo, and Bolivia. There are different venues across Venezuela. Then we have here the 24th Vida Bolivia Convention. That is important here, integrating international multicultural experiences in ELT. Day, January uh, the 6th, well, from January the 6th to the 10th, uh, 2019. The venue, Santa Cruz de la Sierra, Bolivia. Also, we have here the Facebook, Vida Bolivia, Tizel, and IA Tafel. So you have here the content information, you have here the web page. You can go to online and you can uh, have more information on this web page, www.vidabolivia.org. Colombia, we have TESOL Colombia 2019, going beyond theory, rejuvenating literacies. So we have here the date, we have here uh, this in May, uh, 16th to May 18th, 2019. So we have here the venue, the Universidad de la Sabana Chia, close to Bogota. Uh, they are calling for papers and the deadline is on December uh, 15th. So basically we have here like the friend uh, trends, assessment, innovation, mythology, material design, teacher development, digital learning experiences, teaching and learning communities, language learning and literacy. So they have here all the information. There is also, we have here <clears throat> like the numbers on the poster so you can see all the information. Then you have the uh, emails and also we have the, the, the Twitter so you can have all the information if you would like to send your uh, information and be part of Diesel Colombia 2019. So we have here a, another um, 
we have here ACPI TESOL Costa Rica Convention 2019, competence and teaching practices for effective performance. That will be the date uh, from July th the 3rd to the, the 5th, 2019. The venue in San Jose. And then you have here the content information. You, like, you can email. And uh, so you have here the content information. So basically, well, so let's just start. Uh, it's important before uh, bringing these that we have people from not only from America, just uh, we have here people from Europe, from Asia, and Africa. It's important and welcoming all this. It's really interesting to have a lot of people around the world so they, we can share about different topics through this webinar. So we have here the before. Um, I have some questions that you have to answer in order to get a certification. So, so pay attention to those questions and then try to answer so in order to get your certificate. So the first question is, what makes a large class? And we have another question, right? Three advantages and three disadvantages of a large class. And the third one, choose three techniques that you will apply in your classes and tell us why. So keep in mind uh, these questions in order to get your certificate. So we have here Professor uh, Gabriela Rodriguez. She's a Master of Science, is a passionate t-shirt trainer committed to contribute for a better education in the world. She finished uh, the TEFL Master and holds an international certification for Cambridge and Michigan University. She's an IA TEFL collaborator in Peru. She works as an English teacher for the uh, Universidad Peruana de Ciencias Aplicadas, and as a teacher, trainer, coach, and ELT consultant for educational publishers. Currently, she's, a, uh, she's founder and director of Asesoría Educativa A1, a consulting and training company for English teachers. We have here this webinar dealing with large classes in a fun way. Working with large classes can be really exhausting and very demanding. But when a class is large, there are some concepts we need to know. We have collected the greatest ideas in our classes easier and more enjoyable. In this webinar, you'll review 10 strategies to deal with large classes that are result of action research in her classes, mainly uh, Professor Gabriela Rodriguez's classes. So keep in mind, we welcome you all. It's great to have people here from uh, America, Caribbean, Europe, Asia, and Africa. So it is interesting. So we have this uh, webinar. Welcome, Professor Maria, uh, Gabriela Rodriguez. OK, welcome. Welcome, everybody. So glad to be here sharing and learning from you guys. Okay, we're ready. Okay, let's start. Okay, guys, um, well, uh, sometimes when we listen this idea of having a large class, our faces change like this. It's like, like no, no large classes, all right? And today we're going to see briefly what makes a large, large class, some concepts we need to, to know, uh, what are the disadvantages or advantages of having a large class, some strategies to deal with in a fun way, right? How to feel uh, very uh, happy and proud of having a large class. And maybe a little of reflection and a roundup to summarize everything, okay? Uh, let's get it started. Okay, the idea is that after the workshop, our faces change like a smiley one and we enjoy more our large classes, okay? 
Uh, first of all, I would like to know what's your name, where are you from, what level do you teach, where do you work in a public school or private school, how many students do you have? All right. So I would like to to listen of some of you giving information about these questions. Okay, I'm sure you are writing. Uh, there is a bit uh, like issue when dealing with large classes in a public school and in a private school, there are some differences. Let's deal with that. Okay. What makes a large class? I would like to listen to some ideas Okay, what do you think? Uh, could you help me please um, give me give me your ideas, write in your ideas, please? I would like to, to listen to some of your ideas. All right, I'm sure you are giving great ideas. Okay, what do you think? What makes a large class? Definitely the number of students, okay? But the number of students varies according to different factors. So a, a large class is not only the number of students. That is what I learned, what I read, what I researched. The mixability, the different mixability we have in a class also matters even if you have a like a small group if your student have everyone different abilities it makes a large class too uh, for example if your school the number of students is 20 and the next week you have 30 that makes a large class because of you are used to teach 20 students and suddenly they open up and increase the number. That makes a large class. The time a lesson is given. For example, if you have only 45 minutes to give your lecture, your class, to deliver your lesson, that makes a large class because it's like complicates your work and make your time even shorter the lack of teaching materials too that is another factor that contributes to make our classes large okay not enough practice time if you are delivering a session and the students don't have enough time to produce don't have enough time to ask you to get what you are teaching, that also makes a large class. The country where you are, uh, for example, for us here in Peru, maybe a large class can be 40 students, but for Korea or for China, it can be 100 students. For United States, it could be 25 students. So it depends a lot the location where you are living. Your contest is really, really important. The size of your classroom. Sometimes you have a, a small space that is full, or you have a, a big space that is like kind of empty because of the, how many chairs you have. So these factors makes a large class. So wherever, whenever you think about a large class, not only focus on the number of students. There are many, many factors that you can see that matters to make a large, large class. Okay, let's get started. Uh, this is a little theory that I, I wanted to, to share with you. 
large class size may be the result of many factors. Lack of physical space is sufficient, teaching staff, budgetary constraints, unexpected high enrollment, changes in degree certificate requirements. No matter what the cost, large class size is already a reality for some language teacher, and no doubt will be in an increasingly common situation in language classes of tomorrow. So everyone is going to face this, face this situation, OK? And that is a challenge, and that is a, a tool for us to succeed with them, OK? We cannot help it. Just follow the sequence. OK, disadvantages of a large class. When we talk about large class, most of our faces like get a, a little not very happy large class. There are some disadvantages, of course, and uh, here I would like to share some of them. Okay. Oh no, my large class. What can I do? It's going to be a lot of work. Okay. So let's see, some disadvantages that I found in my research. Sometimes they don't understand when I speak, OK? So you can see faces, and you think they don't understand when I speak. That is a disadvantage. You can be explaining to each one, because you don't have the time. There are so many students. So that is a disadvantage. Too much material to prepare, OK? Sometimes if you have 40, 50 students, you have to make a lot of photocopies. If you don't have photocopies, you have to write on the board. If you don't have maybe a projector, you have to, to deal with this situation. So many exams to be graded. We always are like assessing our students and monitor them. So yes, so many exams to be graded. Uh, and it can happen that poor classroom management. Sometimes our students get out of control. Uh, well, it happened to me once when I was teaching a big, a large class of 40 students. All, all were male. And I was like riding on the board for a, for a little while and they were fighting. So yes, uh, that is a, a disadvantage for us. Increase strain in teachers. Yes, it means a lot of effort, but passion and love can cure that. The classroom is too small and noisy. Yes, it makes you also uh, feel less productive. Uh, you think if I have fewer students, I can produce more. Okay, that is a sense that always happens. There are students, and we have to be careful with this, there are students who like to hide between the others. So like they want to be invisible. And in different ways, they don't participate in class. They are the shy ones. So this is a disadvantage because since you have a large class, you are not going to focus on those students. So that is a disadvantage. And uh, of course, we have mixed ability classes. That is something that I understand now. Every single class is a mixed ability classes, and there are techniques to, to deal with. But it makes worse if you have 40, 50, or 60 students. Sometimes it frustrates teachers and affects health. Um, there are many stu stu teachers who can speak, has this problem with the voice. Uh, Sometimes you get angry, you can't control your nerves. Yeah, all right. And sometimes you feel like you prepare this activity and it didn't work. So you feel kind of frustrated too, OK? So guys, these are some disadvantages that I wanted to share with you. But not everything is negative. And we have so many positive things about large classes. Now let's change the face. Here, OK? You know, what is the great honor that we have to deal with a large class? 
your voice is going to be heard by many, many students, and these students are going to retransmit what you say, and hundreds of students are going to learn from you, okay? That is a very good opportunity for you. What are the advantages of a large class? Okay, so now we change our face. We are happy. We have to face it. Advantages. Ha large classes are high energy and fun. You have different inputs. The students learn to be more autonomous. You can't be with them, so they need to be more independent. Develop better team skills. They work in group much better. They know each other better. They foster social interactions. They become friends for life. They become helpers. It builds confidence. They feel, I'm not alone. I would you. I have a team that works and supports my job. They will ensure they will help you. Mistakes are part of the process. This is another thing that I always start my classes with. Mistakes are welcome in the class. Nobody is going to judge you because you are making a mistake. So give them confidence to keep going in this process of learning. Classes go by quickly. Yes, this is something that I understood. When you have a large class, you need more time. You say, oh my God, I have just started and we have to finish. There are different opinions. That is, makes your class richer and richer. Different opinions make your, classes, make your classes more challenging and more open. Classes are more rewarding. You can see more faces smiling. You can shape more lives. You can develop imagination and creativity in different ways, in different extents, to the extent that one can be dreaming about a visiting a Machu Picchu and the other one is dreaming about riding a, a camel in Egypt, all right? So creativity immediately goes together. Don't just go with imagination, let creativity take place, okay? So until now, we have seen what are some advantages. I hope you can remember. Uh, we saw also some disadvantages. I hope you can remember some disadvantages, but remember, this is what is more rewarding, the advantage of having large class. Okay, now the point, a strategy is to deal with a large class in a fun way. So let's start sharing, okay? Number one, you have to start always your course, and no matter the, the level you are teaching, the importance of your subject. In English, when you are teaching English, you have to make your students aware the importance of this language. Look, now we are having a webinar online with people around the world. So it opens your door, okay? This is something that it's like a secret to start your classes uh, on the right foot, okay? So why is important? You have to make a presentation. You have to do something from the very beginning of your course, telling them that your subject is the most important, that your subject is really helpful, that your subject will open them doors to the world, okay? So. Why learning English, for example, to understand my environment? For example, here in Peru, in my country, we have malls, and the spelling is mal. So you can read mall and no mal. You can understand what is a KFC. I'm going to eat at the Kentucky Fried Chicken. You can understand it. I'm going to eat at the Burger King. Okay. I'm wearing blue jeans. So that helps you understand the environment around you because believe it or not, we are like attack, no attack. We are living with English. Every day, many words are important from English in our languages. 
Next, if you want to get better job opportunity, English is like your passport. Uh, you want to be updated with the latest technologies, with the latest things about medicine. Books are written in English. Uh, programming languages are written in English. Programming instructions are written in English. Yes, English is really important. What else? If you want to play games, if you want to listen to music, if you want to uh, watch some videos, go to the movies, English will make your life easier. You will understand better. Okay, you do, you maybe can pronounce better. You don't say game, game. You say game, game. The game is over. The game is over. The game is over. You learn, you learn. Even if you are uh, studying in the school or studying at university, your parents will feel very proud of you speaking another language. And I heard my, my students' parents and saying, oh, my son speaks English. Oh, my daughter speaks English. No, she has a good command of English. She can travel to another country. Okay? So that makes parents and family very, very proud. Next. English will let you travel to study abroad, to get a scholarship, to pass your exams at the university, the school. Yes. There are a lot of need of passing with a good grade and to get to know new people and cultures so that is the key number one the first strategy is letting your students your 80 students your 40 students your 100 students that your subject is important today okay that is the first technique right okay now let's move on second technique care for them learn their names I know it's hard, but we should learn their names. It's so sweet when someone say, Gabriela, are you okay? Just mention their names. Make eye contact. There are games where you can learn the names. You can even provide them an ID card. You can create your own ID card. What I used, a technique that I use also is when I have my classes um, stable, it's like the second week, I take a picture of the my class and I print it out and I post in my classroom. And a student has to stick post-its on it with their names. Okay? So we can see it very often. We can learn their names. Okay, this is a photo of my participants in a workshop. All right? So you can use this. I took a photo at that very moment of the presentation and then I post the names. Okay? I post the names and they feel more identified. Oh, the teacher knows my name. Okay? And you have, that is the second technique, guys. You need to learn your students' names for a more personalized and caring uh, teaching relation with your students. Okay? And remember to make eye contact. Technique number three, provide a structure to your lesson. Let them know, let them know that you are prepared. Let them know that you are not improvising your classes. Let them know that you have a structure to follow a plan of your lesson. So important, plan your lesson. Plan your sessions. Use a variety of activities. All right, use a variety of activities, plan your lessons, and organize your board, okay? Vocabulary on what side, questions on what side, agenda on another side. Uh, organize your materials and your seating arrangement. Change your seating arrangement from time to time. Make them move. Don't keep the same arrangement every class. Okay, sometimes it's difficult, but they are a large group. They can help you moving everything. So change from time to time. I had a group, I was monitoring a school that this group changed the classroom about three times every class. They have classes of three hours. So they are keeping 
and move, moving uh, their students, okay? Number three, provide structure to your lesson. A strategy number four, this is what we, we do, set rules. So a technique that I recommend is, if you want to have 10 rules, one, five rules, you give five rules and ask them to give them five rules. If you want to have six rules in your classroom, provide three and ask them to give you idea. Make them participants and make decision makers of the rules in the class, okay? So believe in yourself, work hard. Always give them voice. Outstand values. This is another technique that I use in my classes. Every week I put a value that we need to work. Okay, so this week we are going to work on responsibility. So I you assign tasks and they have teach them that this is very important. Education is not only, or English is not only about learning a language. Education is whole holistic uh, frame to learn a language. It's powerful. Another thing is community. Every single member of your class is part of a community. It's your family. It's first grade family. My first grade family. You are a family. And you are the leader. Okay? So they have to help each other. They have to be compassionate with the students. have to be respectful. So that is something that really works. Let them feel part of a family. Number five. Interactions to build confidence. This is a technique that uh, it worked for me. I studied this, I researched about it, and that's what I'm going to share with you. Okay, uh, first, when you want to ask some students, you have a large class, don't start saying Jorge or George. No, don't call them by their name for the first question. No, give them confidence. The idea is first, the first interaction is teacher, students, the whole class, teacher, students. Number four, go first. Go first. A student, teacher. Hello, teacher. Hello, guys. How are you today? Hello, dear student. How are you today? And the student have to answer the whole class. I'm fine. Everybody speaks. All right? So that creates confidence. No mistakes. Nothing, no errors, everything is welcome. Everybody can speak, even the hidden one. Then divide your classes in group and ask them to talk group and group. Interact between, interaction between groups. They will feel more confident. And then per work, per work will give them the, like the security to speak. If you're making a mistake, okay? They are checking each other. And finally, individual. Okay, Juan, you can. If you, if you call them by their names at the very first time, they're going to be shy. They're going to be like uh, embarrassed. Maybe they, they will feel frustrated because they don't understand the question. So follow this interaction. Number four, first. Teacher, class, class, teacher. Then assign groups. Okay, interaction between groups then per work and finally volunteers finally call them by their names all right so these are the interactions okay group group okay try this don't start your class just calling by names okay there are some times that it works and you know volunteers can participate always but uh, this is the sequence that it worked for me that i read about and i recommend Number five, six, everybody has mixability groups, so get some materials for fast finishers and slower students. You know your student. You have to learn from your students. You know who's going to finish fast and who's going to finish a little uh, slow, slowly. So be prepared for that. Assign, sorry, but you have to be prepared for that. Uh, we have to have some extra material, extra task for the fast finisher. So you, uh, Joseph is a fast finisher, you know. So you are not going to wait until he says, teacher, I finished, what can I do? No, okay, you know that 
Joseph is going to finish. Joseph, if you finish here, is your extra material. Joseph, if you finish, please go and help Juan. Joseph, if you finish, you are going to be my assistant today. All right? So assign roles. Be prepared. Another strategy for these mixed abilities classes is you know that Joseph is a strong student and you know that uh, maybe Peter is not a strong student. So you will say, Peter, uh, do you like chocolates? And Peter is going to say, yes, I love it. Oh, me too. And Joseph, Joseph is a student, is a fast finisher. He knows, you know that he knows more. So you will, do you know the ingredients to prepare the chocolate? So look, the, the, question, the questions are very related, but the, the questions are different at the same time. You are handling one special question for Peter and one special question for Joseph that is orally. Don't make them feel embarrassed. Always provide them confidence. Don't spot the mistakes. For example, if Juan, you know, is making some mistake, don't go and say, okay, your pronunciation is very bad. Okay, you say, good job. Okay, keep on working. Keep on working. Okay, I know you can do it better. Thank you for being volunteer. Thank you for participating. Always. Be thankful with them. Number seven. Uh, technique number seven is differentiation. Differentiation is important. Okay? Uh, for that, we need to assign roles. Everybody uh, wants to be involved in the activity. So assign roles, different roles. <clears throat> and they have to rotate. Let them produce different outcomes. This is one topic about differentiation is sometimes you ask your students, okay, I would like you to write a paragraph about your last vacation. Now you have 50 students and sometimes you get to know your students. So you have to give different tasks. Okay, I would like the topic is about my last vacation. Now, for today, we're going to have three different tasks. You can draw about your last vacation. You can write about your last vacation. Or you can maybe make a story about your vacation. Or you can make a poem. Or you can sing. So the students are going to choose their task according to their abilities. The Teacher, the students are going to choose the task according to the way they feel better, not you, teacher. No, but I want all my students right. Yes, but remember that we are different. Okay, remember that students don't need to be frustrated if they don't feel frustrated about not writing at that moment. Okay, so different outcomes and different procedures are welcome. Remember, we have different inputs. We learned listening, we learn singing, we learn in different ways. So let them produce in different ways too. If they draw, okay, they have to explain their, their picture. If they sing, they're pronouncing, they are getting involved with the language. Sitting arrangement, as I told you, is important. Uh, Sometimes um, you can divide a class into groups and create debates. Even if you cannot move the, the chairs, because sometimes it's difficult, uh, you can divide your groups imaginary, in an imaginary way. Uh, you can uh, prepare the seating arrangement before the class. So you can say, today we're going to have two seating arrangements. After the break, we're going to move like this. And before the break, we're going to move like this. There are different techniques, different strategies. And I'm sure your students are going to be more comfortable working with in different ways. And they're going to be surprised. Uh, and I'm sure it will work in your classroom. Don't be shy, please. Uh, don't feel scared of trying new things. 
try, try and try, keep trying. That is the way that we learned. Um, if it works, you will feel your, you will see your student faces smiling. You will um, build confidence in them. All right, and they will love you more. Number eight. Uh, this is another technique that works with me. Every month, or you can organize it every semester according to your school, to your university, where you teach. Uh, you have to start a project from the very time, um, very day, first day of the classes. Assign the project. The project can be a karaoke. The project can be a presentation. The project can be a piece of art. So, uh, if they are going to sing, make groups and ask them to choose a song that they want to, to sing, they want to represent, or they want to perform in front of the class. And that group is going to sing, and you have to check every week their advances. Okay, do you have, and you can give them five minutes or 10 minutes for their preparation every class, okay? And you have to tell them in advance, uh, we are going to present uh, this project by the end of the semester, by the end of the term, by the end of the month. And if everything goes well, you can invite other teachers, other classroom, other students to listen to them, to see the performance. If they are going to present a project about my, my daily routine, they have to prepare the project, they have to take pictures, they have to prepare it. And every class you have to check the advance of it. Help them checking, giving them security, confidence about the, the work that they're doing. If they are go going to present a piece of art, all right, that can be individual according to their learning styles, their preferences, yeah? And they can explain, they can express their feelings through art. Okay, so you have different tasks. I'm just proposing here like, three ideas that I have, and I did with my students, but you can do more. They can create videos, okay? Uh, this is a very engaging activity because you can see the progress, and they can see the progress. You start from nothing, from scratch, and then you go growing together until the end of the month, the end of the cycle that they have to perform. Uh, their projects and I'm sure you will get a lot of surprises about the results that they have all right uh, and the uh, technique number nine is if you have classes uh, two hours a week three hours a week four hours a week depending on the number please choose at least one hour or 30 minutes a month, it depends on you, to listen to your students. Build autonomy. I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to explain what to do here. Okay. Uh, in this 30 minutes, in this hour, you will listen, you will tell your students, this is our, the voice time. This is the time for you. I would like to listen how you feel in my classes. I would like to listen ideas how to improve our classes. I would like to listen uh, what can you recommend to make our classes better uh, and listen to them. Even if they cannot uh, produce their ideas in English, listen to them and then you translate that. Okay, you want this? And you, after this, uh, you are building a teamwork result. You are making that part of your classes. You are giving them a care, a lot of care about what they feel. And if some of them cannot express, make groups and they have to propose ideas. Mm -hmm. If your class is 40, 50 students, divide the class in, in two, four, six, okay? teams and they can give you their opinions okay so get closer move through the classes move through, through them 
Okay, enter to their space. Be part of them. Let them let them know that the classes are the reason of their, your classes are them, and you are to help. You are to monitor. You are to facilitate their work. The last, but the not not the least, and something that really worked for me is like every class you need to recycle constantly. Start with a review about last class. Start your classes with the reviews of the previous class, with a game, with a competition, with a song, with a listening. Vary your activities. Recycle the topic from time to time. You are like here. Do you remember what was uh, a disadvantage of large classes? Uh, what is the technique about? What is? Why do we have to learn names? So recycle your topic from time to time. So don't do all your topic and at the end do the uh, like the feedback. No. Start your topic, stop for a moment, do a recycle. Continue. Continue on another part, stop your topic and do a recycle. Make sure that your students are following you. Make sure that your students are understanding you. Remember, according to Krashen, theory is that we don't learn something that we don't understand, meaningful learning. Okay, make sure that they are understanding. Don't speak in complicated words. Don't show to be a sophisticated teacher. Be as simple as you can. Be the, the way they are. And number three is let them know how they are doing self-assessment. This part of metacognition, that you know your own progress, that you are uh, with them assessing, and they are like being part of their uh, profession, no, their development, okay? They have to follow the self-assessment. That is a good part, do with that. Now, most of the books have this part of now I can do it. And when I was teaching, I think like I didn't pay the enough attention to it. But I know that it's important now that with experience that I'm working with publishers, I know that that part has a reason. Is to provide confidence, self-confidence. So the first classes start doing that way with them and check the answers and they Give them opportunity to to be honest with themselves. Walk around the classes, check this. Or if you they, if your student don't have a book, write the faces on the board and say, "Can you name the four uh, five advantages?" And check. Okay, do with them. All right, this is a part. So we have recycled constantly modeling your class. If you want a quest, you want answers first to be the model remember teachers you are the model for your students not only in the classroom you are the model of using outside the classroom okay everywhere you are a public person everywhere you go your students will be looking at you even if you don't know that okay so be the model wherever you go Okay, now let's make a summary of everything. Start with the importance of your subject, showing care for them, learning their names in different ways, provide the structure to your lesson, show that you prepare your classes, don't improvise them a lot, uh, set rules, values, and build community with them. They are a, a big part of your Decisions, interactions, first teacher, class, the whole class, the whole class, the teacher, groups and groups, pairs, and then individual work, building confidence. Mixabilities and differentiation are very tied together. So get ready for fast finishers and for the slower ones. Uh, a set differentiation is affecting different outcomes 
not the ones that you want or you expect, the ones that your students can make. Uh, organized projects have super, uh, super, uh, establish a date of the presentation, follow the, the project advances uh, weekly, uh, give them voice to listen to their opinion, what do they recommend to you, what they like about the classes, what doesn't work, uh, talk about maybe you have a problem with the behavior of you, the students, you can talk about it. Uh, let them know each other better by uh, teamwork. And finally, the last uh, technique and recommendation is recycle constantly while you are teaching modeling, reviewing, giving feedback. Positive feedback always goes first. And the metacognition part, the social assessment, is very important. Okay. Um, next part is like children's children trust you. Be the best example inside and outside the classroom. Okay. So imagine you have forty students. They have forty parents, and eyes are everywhere. So be the way uh, you are respecting your students and your students will respect you more. And uh, I have some, some questions for you guys. I'm sure that uh, people from Ben Tiesel and the organizer are going to ask you. These are the questions that you can uh, answer. Uh, to getting your certificates. Now I have a few minutes to listen to your questions. I really want to thank you for your time. And I hope uh, everything was clear. Any questions, anything you can write me. All right. Okay, I think uh, we are kind of done. References for, for what I read, what I found information that I used to to prepare this presentation is there. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor Gabriela, for this amazing webinar about dealing with large classes in a fun way. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, please remember these questions that you have to answer in order to get the certificate. Uh, question number one is what makes a large class? Question number two, write three advantages and three disadvantages of a large class. And number three, choose three techniques that will apply that you will apply in your classes and tell us why. So from now on. We want you, the public, if you have any question, you can post it right now in the comment box in YouTube. In the meanwhile, Professor Gabriela, I will read you some of the comments we had in this webinar because there were a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of people talking, a lot of people in, interacting between themselves, and it was amazing. So, we have some comments here, for instance, uh, my name is Maria Flores. I am from Venezuela. I teach in a private institute in Caracas. Sometimes I have classrooms with more than 20 students, beginners and intermediate. Zuha says, what makes a large class? Well, I would say the number of students largely determines the class. Uh, Thomas Brito from Mexico says, I work at a private language school and I generally work with small groups ranging from 5 to 20. So, Professor Gabriela, I would like to know, what is the largest group you have worked with? How many well, students? Well, I have the largest group that I have in Peru is like 44 students. And you know, I had this a large group very frequently. So I love working with large group. I miss my large classes. Now I teach private, uh, I train teachers, 
but I really miss my large classes. So I'm welcome to visit any any part. Remember the uh, answers to these questions. You have to send them to through email. Ah, okay, through mail. Yeah. So. Uh, Professor Gabriela, someone asked if you can uh, talk about, uh, again, if you can talk about the advantages and disadvantages, like real quick. All right. Okay. Yes. Uh, a review. Yes. Uh, at the beginning, we all start like, oh my God, I'm going to have 100 students, right? Uh, it's a lot of work. That is the first thing. Yes. And some disadvantages is that sometimes we get out of control. Uh, sometimes uh, you know, who hide, who don't want to be like a spot. Some disabilities is really we have to grade a lot of exams, all right. And but not everything is negative, as I told you. Uh, your class is going to be more, even more um, enrichment for you and for them. Uh, we are going to have. We are going to learn from each other more because there are different inputs. You are going to see how teamwork is succeeding in your classes. And you're going to build better relationship with your students because they will need each other. And teamwork skills are going to be really high. All right? OK, thank you very much, Professor Gabriela. Uh, our next question is, how we can make our students creative for PPT presentations for college graduates. All right. Uh, always setting the example. You can even have, like, give them 40 or, or 30 minutes or 20 minutes, depending on your time, on how to do it. Take a picture from them at the moment. If you have the, the, techni the technology in your class, you have projector, take a picture and post it there and start teaching them work with them always modeling what you expect model and i'm sure your student will produce something incredible amazing more than you sh you show them wow that's amazing so i'm going to read you some other comments professor gabriela um we have uh, someone says that what she considers about disadvantages of dealing with large classes is might be it, uh, the difficulty. Two sets of quiz papers have to be made. Uh, negative behavior can be more. But on the other hand, someone says that some of the advantages is that students develop team spirit and cooperative skills. Uh, Angel Moronto says that he also includes culture as an opportunity for them to express more. And Suha says that she uses blended learning to cope with large classes. It really works wonders, she says. Uh, Professor Gabriela, we have another comment that says, uh, I have a classroom with 80 students. The primary objective is to maintain the curve. How would we incorporate the strategies proposed here? Okay, that is teamwork, working in two groups, okay, dividing us in, in two groups. When it's a really large car, we cannot handle 12 groups. So you can divide 50, 50, 40, 40, okay? And always ask them to choose representatives to provide a, the voice of the groups, to represent their groups. That's what I did, all right? So, and it worked, it worked. Because we all know and we're conscious that Nobody's going to speak. You have 80 students, but very, very, try to give voice. Try to listen to, they, try, to them, try to look at them. You can look at them individually, making eye contact. Okay? Perfect. We have uh, some other comments that says, I do learn names of my students. The students feel happy when the teacher calls the students by names and for the concern. Uh, Patty says, if one method is successful in one class, that doesn't guarantee that it, it would be the same method, uh, would be successful in another class. So a teacher has to be ready and experimental. What is your opinion about this, Professor Gabriela? The, I agree 
I totally agree with that because every single group is different. What you work with first graders in one classroom doesn't work for the others. And I really love that uh, the participants are making everything better, telling me that blended uh, classes are blended uh, classes work for them, for large groups. Yes, I really like that comment. And what about this? Um, yes, uh, I think that uh, working with large group is special. Okay, and we have to vary activities, use different techniques, and remember that every class is different. Even though you are in, in the same school, even though they, they are the same age, every, every class is different. And we have to be more creative, okay? Always innovating our classes. Unpredicted, unpredictable. Thank you very much. Some other comments says, um, it says, in Honduras public schools in urban areas, in public and sometimes in private, schools can have around 80 to 90 students. At universities, the number can grow up to 120. That's amazing. Um, uh, there's a comment that says that uh, he considers that the hardest part of all these tips is differentiation. Uh, Professor Mary says students love working in groups. Um, Graziem says outdoor activities help a lot when space is available. Uh, we have uh, another question here. Uh, no questions. It says, what about the use of native language? I know it is important to use, but students would not try to speak English when they start to use their native language. I have around 50 students in my classes. Okay, so that is uh, something very controversial that I have talked about it uh, a few times. Uh, when, and when I monitor schools, I monitor teachers, when teachers get like they know that their students are not understanding, they start telling them everything in Spanish. So what I recommend and what it works for me is start teaching, in, start speaking English from the very first moment, but very little and a lot of body language. Okay, I don't speak a lot. I speak a little, very meaningful, concrete and with body language. And if the students speak in Spanish, for example, if they say, eh, profesora, mesa, okay, mesa, I say, okay, teacher, table, okay, mesa, table, okay. I don't say don't speak, never, never say don't speak your, don't speak Spanish, don't speak, don't speak your uh, native language, never say that because you are denying your culture, okay. They are going to speak their, their L1, uh, because they want to communicate, but uh, give them the right input. Exposure is very important, okay? And don't complicate their lives. Be very simple when you speak. Perfect. So, Professor Gabriela, we have two last questions. And the first one says, is by Orlando, it says, what about very adult? I mean, students in the 30s and on. The scope and strategies to be used must vary. All right. Um, I had taught uh, like grandmothers. I had a group of <laughs> elderly. Uh, and uh, okay, well, my specialty is adults. Uh, and they love working in, in teams and projects, assigned projects, a blended learning and flipped classroom works very good with them. Okay. Uh, since they are those, many of them like uh, love technology and they have meeting online, they prepare different projects. You will get awesome results if you do this like blender learning with them. Okay. And our last question is by Tomas. It says, Professor Gabriela, we've spoken about large classes. However, is there anything such as too many students in a class? Okay, uh, too many students in a large class. Well, uh, we don't have control about it. 
because we are the teachers. Uh, sometimes we don't make the decisions of how many students we, we can have. The coordinator, the directors, the manager, they decide the number of students. And we can say too much, but we never know what is too much, how much is too much. Yes, we need to face and keep it going and do our best to make our students learn uh, what we want to, to teach. That is my, my advice. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor Gabriela. So we finished with the question. This was today's webinar about dealing with large classes in a fun way by Professor Gabriela Rodriguez. Thank you very much, Professor. It was an amazing lecture. The enthusiasm you showed us and the enthusiasm people showed was amazing. Thank you very much for your time, your dedication. Thank you all, and I really uh, like to participate in other events. Uh, if I will keep posted from all your events, uh, for so we can have more Peruvians participating in your webinars. All right. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much. We also want to thank the Central American and the Caribbean Basin TESOL affiliates. That is Belize, Colombia, Costa Rica, Cuba, El Salvador, Guatemala, Haiti. Honduras, Mexico, Nicaragua, Panama, Peru, Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and Venezuela. We also want to thank all the people from around the world who was with us here today. We had people from Nepal, Pakistan, Paraguay, India, Poland, and Saudi Arabia. Thank you very much, all of you, for being here with us today. Remember, this webinar will be available in the YouTube channel and that in order to get the certificate, you must answer the three questions we already asked you. So we have some upcoming events. We have our next webinar of the CA and CB TESOL affiliate group that is called Doing Action Research Isn't That Hard. Let's do it by Professor Carlos Mayorga. It will be on November 18th, 2018 on Sunday. Here you have the time. We have then our Ventisul Regional Conferences. That will be among November and December 2018. And the venues will be Valencia, Merida, Maturin, Maracaibo, Trujillo, and San Felipe. We have also a 24th BETA Bolivia Convention. It's called Integrating International and Multicultural Experiences in ELT. That it will be between January 6th and January 10th, 2019. The venue will be in Santa Cruz de la Sierra, Bolivia. Here you have the contact. We also have TESOL Colombia 2018, going beyond theory, rejuvenating literacies. That will be in May 16th and May 18th, 2018. The venue will be Universidad de la Sabana Chia, that is close to Bogota. The call for papers deadline is in December 15th, and the trends are sentiment, innovation in methodology and material design, teacher development, digital learning experiences, teaching and learning communities, and language learning and literacies. And we also have the ACPI TESOL Costa Rica Convention 2019 called Competences and Teaching Practices for Effective Performance. That will be on July 3 to 5, 2018. The venue will be San Jose, and you have the contact here. Thank you very much for your presence today in our Ventusel webinar. Then you can follow us on our social media. You can use our hashtags in order to share this content with all your teamwork. Thank you very much, Professor Gabriela, for your time and your dedication. It was an amazing, amazing webinar. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Good luck. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.